Hello and welcome to our third Core Flow Designer video tutorial. In this video, we will use our project from the second video and expand it to use components. These components are something like an independent Core Flow, grouping existing Core Flow items within a Core Flow. And we can also reuse these components multiple times in our main Core Flow. This will make it easier to configure our project by reusing these different components multiple times without needing to reconfigure them over and over again. We will also introduce the authentication of a user by asking the caller to enter a four digit support ID. We won't actually authenticate the caller in this video, that's for the fourth video, but we will read the caller ID the caller enters back to them before forwarding them to the support queue. One of our components will be reused multiple times in this tutorial. So let's go back to our second project that we created. Let's create a component for the sales option. In the Project Explorer on the top right hand side, right click the project and select New Component. Let's name it Sales Option. Double clicking on this new component will show you a blank core flow, just like we saw at the beginning of our first project. So I'm going to go and transfer the Sales Office Hours core flow into the Sales Option component. But this will leave the sales option empty in our main call flow, right? Not to worry, this is easily fixed. In our list of call flow components on the left hand menu, you will notice our new sales option component is listed under the user defined components right down the bottom. All I need to do is drag the sales option component to the main sales flow, our option number two if you remember. We might just be seeing only one building block here, but double clicking on it reveals the more complex flow we had within. As you may have already noticed, on the top of the screen now, we can see the main core flow and the sales option component are now in tab form. This allows the transition between the different independent core flows in a very easy fashion. I will now create a new component for the support queue. In this component now, I will create an authentication component. From the call control section, I will move the authentication component to our call flow. Double clicking on this component, I will now configure the necessary authentication parameters. We will ask for the user ID only, not a PIN in this case. The prompts required for the authentication will also be created as text to speech, just like we did in the second video. I will also modify the number of acceptable digits to be 4. And the stop digit will be set to none, so after the 4 digits are entered, it will automatically be accepted. When a valid support ID has been entered, the valid input condition will be met, and the call will be processed according to this condition. I will put a prompt playback component into the call flow and name it ID verification. Let's edit this to say the support ID you have entered is followed by the support ID. The first prompt will be in quotation marks to read out the text. The second prompt will be the value of the ID entered. The function key will be used in this case to get the value of the authentication ID that has been entered. 
By clicking the function key, the expression editor is opened where we can go and extract the value of a variable. Click the variables tab. We can see the authentication elements. We will need to have the authentication ID read out. So all I need to do is drag the ID element to the expression builder. Clicking on OK, we can now see that the authentication ID will be the prompt which is read out, and this is without quotation marks. I will now move the existing core flow components of the support queue into the new support option component. Now, if someone enters an invalid support ID three times, the call will be forwarded to the sales queue according to the sales option component. So I will bring that component into use. The components I created earlier allow me to reuse the mini call flows multiple times. All I need to do is drag the sales option component from the users of defined components in our left-hand menu to the invalid input. Now going back to our main core flow page, we will drag the support option component to option number one. This will activate our mini call flow when the caller presses option number one. So let's now go and test our new support option component. I will enter a random four digit support ID for now, and this will transfer our call to the support queue. But before I do, I will go and build the project. Going to the PBX, I will import that call flow. And going to my inbound rules, I will modify my inbound rule to reflect the new CFD. Let's go and test that call now. Welcome to our company. Press 1 for technical support. Press 2 for sales. We'll press 1. Please enter your four-digit support ID. Okay, I will enter a four-digit ID. The support ID you have entered is 1,234. Your call will now be transferred to technical support. So it reads back my support ID and forwards the call to technical support. And just like that, we have made the call through the CFD to enter our support ID. It reads it back and forwards the call. I hope you enjoyed our third installment of the CFD video tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention. See you again.